Hello and welcome to Youth Cook Jam's Online Bits and Bytes lessons. Today we will be continuing with our unit in Microsoft's Make Code Microbit Editor. Um, due to the virtual nature of our class, this program has been designed to work only with the, um, or specifically, not only, specifically with the online simulator provided by Microsoft's Microbit Editor. Um, however, if you have a microbit at home, the actual physical um, device, you are welcome to download the program and use it on your own. We'll give a brief overview of how to do that at the end, um, but it is not the focus of this activity just because we don't expect our students right now to have access to a microbit. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with this. We're going to be making a um, kind of our own music or I guess DJ tool where the micro bit is going to take input from the user and it will affect the sounds that are used. So let's open up a browser on your computer or a new tab or window. And in the address bar at the top, you're gonna type make code. So you can type make code micro bit and hit enter and that does a search and it's gonna bring up this first option and you can do um, it should have the URL above it that says makecode.microbit.org. And you're going to click that, and this will take you to the home page um, where we have, you can see all the other programs I've worked on. This is all saved in cookies. It's not saved because I have an account, but you're welcome to create an account if you want. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So click the new project button, this big purple with the purple block with the plus sign in there. You do have to name your projects. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but if you want to practice good naming skills, um, you can name it the activity name or anything you want. So I'm going to name it Music Maker. It, need, it should be a descriptive name of what it is. It's, if you're using a public computer, please don't use your real name um, because, again, it will get saved in the history, so you don't want your name there for other people to see. Okay, so once we're inside of this editor, on the far left, you're going to see our microbit simulator that we'll be able to interact with. For now, especially since we're playing the music, um, music on microbit is not really volume controlled on its end. You guys can control your speaker volume, um, but it is really loud. So I'm just going to go ahead and press the stop button so that this doesn't run while we're coding. And in the middle here, we have our blocks our block sections or our block drawers. So these are the main ones that we'll use, but we might pull a few from the advanced section too. So if you really want to get um, a complex program, you'll use some advanced blocks. And then over here on the right, we have our workspace and you always will have an on start and a forever block given to you. Um, we are going to use both today, so we're going to leave them in the workspace. But what I am going to do is just move forever kind of over here to the right. Um, so they're not quite on top of each other. All right, so let's get started with the program. Um, before we can start coding, we need to create a variable. So head to the variables drawer and click the make a variable button. And we're gonna name this tune and press okay. And then still in the variables drawer, we're going to kit, um, select this set tune to zero block and place it inside of our on start block. So when our program starts, we're gonna have the tune set to a value. Um, and we're gonna get this value in just a minute, but that's gonna be part one of setting tune up for when we start. Next, head to the music drawer, and you're gonna get this first block that says play melody and has a bunch of music notes at tempo 120. And we're gonna put that inside of the forever block. So now I'm gonna move this back over so it's a little bit more focused. Um, we will come back and work on some of these variables, but for now, the next thing I want you to do is where you see the music note and all those gray rectangles after it, I want you to click on that and drag it off. And so you can see we just created a copy of that block. Place that over the zero on our set tune block. So, you're, um, so again, you just click on that music note and bring it over and place it over the set to block. So we're going to do some times here in just a second. 
Okay, so this is our... Yes. Okay, yes. Sorry, I was making sure I wasn't missing a step. Okay, so we're almost done setting all of this up. There's a lot of back and forth. For the very last setup we're going to do, um, at, or second to last setup, head back to the variables drawer and grab that tune block and place it over the music note block in play melody. So we kind of did a swap. So what we did here is we're going to set our tune to be either any sound we want or a preset sound um, at the end of the program. And then over here on the forever loop, we're going to always be playing whatever this tune is. And right now it's set to uh, tempo 120, but we're gonna change that too. We're gonna make that a variable um, so that we can change how fast something plays. Um, to do that, head to the music drawer and under, I think it, under tempo, you're gonna see this um, oval block that says tempo and in parentheses BPM, so it's beats per minute. Grab that block and place it over the 120. Um, so like I said, we're gonna be changing how fast the music plays based on which buttons we click. Um, so that's gonna change how fast it plays here and it will keep the music going in the background though. All right. So now that we have our setup done, we can work on the input. Head to the input drawer and grab two of these on button A press blocks and add them to the code. You're gonna see one gray out. That's because you can't have the identical blocks of code in the same program. Um, it only wants to run, run, run one of them, sorry. Um, so what we, and that's fine because we only wanna have A, the action of pressing A connected to one thing and the action of pressing B connected to another. So on your grayed out block, hit the A, hit that square with the A in it and the drop down button and select B. And then it will be active again. Next, we're gonna head back to the music drawer and go back down to that tempo section and we're gonna get two of these change tempo by uh, beats per minute and there's 20 in the bubble. So get two of those and place one inside each of our input blocks. So again, music, scroll down to the tempo section and change tempo by BPM. Both of those BPMs are set to 20, so we're not actually going to hear a difference if we leave them like that. So on the press A button, click on that 20 and change it to negative 30. And on B, you're gonna change the 20 to a positive 30. Okay, so that's it for our input. We're gonna move on to one more event to manage. Um, so the music, when the music's playing on the note, we want to have some, um, we want to see something on the screen. So we're going to do, head to the music drawer and scroll down to uh, Melody Advanced. And you're going to grab this event block right here that says music on melody note played and add it to our code. And then, like I said, we wanna have some other output besides just the music. So we wanna have the lights going off on the screen. To do that, go to the LED box here, and you're going to select the toggle X0 and Y0 block, place it inside our music on block. And the very last thing is we need to head to the math drawer and select two pick random zero to 10 blocks. And I'm just gonna add these off to the side for now. Okay, so I have my pick random blocks. I'm gonna place one over the zero after the X and the other over the zero after the Y. The very last thing that we're gonna do is change those tens to fours. So it should be zero to four on both of our pick random blocks. Okay, so that's all of the changes and events that we have to manage. The very last thing we're gonna do is head back to the top of our code where we have set tune to, and we're gonna choose um, what tune or what music we actually wanna do. So you can do this two ways. Um, click, on, click on the gray rectangles behind that music note, 
and it's going to bring up an editor for us. You can make your own music notes. Um, each button clicked in the row, I believe it works. So each column is a different note, and each button in a column is different. Each button in the row is clicked on will play next. So if I start here, this is the first note that will be played, and then it will go across and then down and each, each column is a different note. Okay, so you can make up your own music or you can choose one that already exists, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm gonna do mystery and then just press done. So if you wanted to see, it will show you what that pattern is. And with that, we are going to um, use the simulator so again, I stopped my simulator from running while we were building the program. So now I'm gonna press play. And if you guys have pressed play, you will hear the music already going. It might be louder than me. Um, if you wanna slow things down, hit the A button. If you wanna speed things up, hit the B button. It might take a second to speed up or slow down, but it will. And the more you click, the more you'll notice it. Um, but this is the melody being played on our screen. Okay. Um, the last thing is if you want to download, you'll just hit the download button and follow the steps from there. Um, I don't have a device, but so I can't really do this. I think some of the newer micro bits you can download over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Um, I don't have that one. If you have one that uses the USB, you're going to click the download button. It's going to, it wants to try. So it's downloaded the application um, microbit-musicmaker.hex. So what you'll want to do is see what the file name is and it, that's gonna be downloaded to your downloads folder on your computer. I don't have one, I'm not gonna, ch I don't have a microbit. You don't ever need to open this file. You just need to drop it into the microbit itself. If I did have a micro bit, I would open my, on Mac, it's Finder. On Windows, it's just your file folder icon. So you're gonna go to your file manager. And on the side, you'll normally see devices or locations on your computer. And if you have your micro bit connected, you'll see it here. From your downloads folder, you'll take that file and just drag and drop it onto the um, micro bit there. And if you have some trouble doing that, you can troubleshoot online. There's lots of instructions, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. Once it's been successfully downloaded, you should be able to play your game. Again, if you have some trouble with that, um, you can probably, let's see, go to home. There's probably some ways to troubleshoot how to download and everything from MakeCode. Um, that is the end of our lesson today. If you want to sign up for live lessons, you need to head to youthcodejam.org. Under our Find Programs tab, head to Bits and Bytes. And then you can just click this button right at the top. It will take you to our Spring 2021 Partners page, Palo Alto. Um, so they are our sponsors for this semester's, for Spring 2021's lessons. You can register for each two-week session at a time, or you can register for all of um, the spring classes that we'll have. So you can see we do rotation, we have puzzle club, we have code adventures, which is what um, this series is for, and we have digital literacy, which is giving kids um, skills beyond coding, uh, how to use a file management system, how to type, um, how to work together, what online culture is, all those kinds of softer, a mix of technical and soft skills that you need for working online. Um, and if you don't want to come online or you want to check back lessons that we've had, you can um, scroll on our page and you'll see the current videos from the series when they're um, available if they're needed. Not all of our lessons require videos, um, so we, but we'll have them here. So here's some from Puzzle Club. And then if you want to find more activities, we have four playlists going. So you can find exclusively Scratch coding activities. Um, you can find our puzzle club and digital literacy activities that we've done, general block coding, and our text-based programming activities. So we have a good mix of already existing lessons, and we'll just continue adding to those. Um, but that's all I have for you until the next video. Have a great day.